done. So today I thought that I would talk about some books that have been written by very famous well-known authors that I don't feel like get talked about as much as the books that made them very famous and very well known. The first that I want to talk about is Rainbow Rowell who was very well known for the book Fangirl. Fangirl is a book that I hold very dear to my heart, I love it, I related to it, but one of my favourite books by Rainbow Rowell is Landline. Now I know that people are aware of Landline, I know that people do talk about Landline, but I feel like Fangirl definitely is the one that gets spoken about the most. Landline is about a woman whose marriage seems to be a bit rocky, there's too much going on, they've got kids and work commitments and too much is going on and she finds this phone and whenever it rings on the other end is her young husband, the younger version of her husband, in the earlier stages of their relationship and it makes her realise why she married him and what is important and makes her sort out all of her priorities and I absolutely love it. It made me cry, it made me smile, it made me feel lots of things and I feel like it's definitely a book that isn't spoken about as much as it should do because it's absolutely fantastic. Then we have a book by Gillian Flynn, author of Gone Girl. Gone Girl became a very successful film Everyone talks about Gone Girl. Understandably, it's a fantastic book. Dark Places is another book by Gillian Flynn, which is about a girl called Libby, and when she was seven, she got her brother put in prison for the murder of the rest of her family. Now she's older, she's met these people who think that her brother Ben is actually innocent, and she's trying to figure out what actually happened. Did she put the wrong person behind bars? It's a thriller, mystery, there's lots of different twists and turns, you don't know who's innocent, who's guilty, and it's a very, very, very enjoyable book, which I do not think is spoken about as much as Gone Girl is, and kind of hides in the shadows. Then I have one of my favourite books that I read as a child, and that book is Candy Floss by Jacqueline Wilson. A lot of Jacqueline Wilson's books are spoken about are books like Tracy Beaker, obviously, because Tracy Beaker was tremendously successful, but I feel as though Candy Floss isn't spoken about as much. I feel as though it's very, very, very underappreciated and I don't see many people talking about it. And I think that it's so good. It's got some very good messages in it. This is a girl called Floss and her mum and dad are divorced and her mum, her stepdad and her little brother are going to be moving to Australia. She decides to stay with her dad who runs a chip shop which isn't doing too well and it's a bit of a struggle but she stays with him and it has lots of good values and she learns lots of things and she meets lots of people and I feel as though it was a very 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 good book. Then I have a book by Meg Cabot and we all know Meg Cabot right? She writes romantic books and nice books and nice soppy books. What I didn't know up until three years ago is that she actually had written a series, a YA fantasy series, the Abandoned series. It's a trilogy, it's about a girl called Pierce who <laughs> flatlines, she dies. She goes to the middle part between being sent to her next destination and there she meets John Hayden who is death essentially and he is in charge of sending people to the next place that they need to go. She decides I'm not dying, I'm gonna go back. Comes back to life, is back on earth and John Hayden is confused and really like, who is she? And he decides to follow her around. Lots of weird things happen, lots of creepy crap happens, there's lots of twists and stuff and it's one of my favourite series and I really enjoyed it and I don't ever hear anybody talking about it but it's such a good series and it's really creative and I really liked it and I didn't see things coming and I thought that it was really well written it showed me a completely different side to Meg Cabot then we have Jack Kerouac on the road one of probably the most popular books in history. He was part of the Beat Generation. But he has other books too. One of those books is Big Sir. Big Sir is basically what happened after On The Road. He didn't know what to do with everything that had happened and how to deal with all of these things and all of this pressure and all of these people that suddenly knew who he was. He went to a cabin on the Californian coast and wrote this book. The main guy is called Jack, he has a different last name than Kerouac, but it's essentially him, it's, it's his life and his struggles and the things that he went through after On The Road came out. It's a really good book, it's not very long at all, and again it just captures the way that Kerouac writes, and I feel as though his other books, because he has so many more as well, On The Road very much overshadows any other work that Kerouac did, even though it's all just as fantastic. Then we have Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. This book is a graphic novel and this is the guy that wrote Scott Pilgrim. This is a book that I didn't even know about. It's such an amazing one of the uh, Downfield Day in the Life videos. 
they go to Forbidden Planet and Phil buys this and that was the first I'd ever heard of it. All I thought this guy did was Scott Pilgrim. It's about a girl called Katie who finds these mushrooms and this little notebook. Basically she writes a mistake that she made that day in the notebook, something she regrets, takes a mushroom. When she wakes up the next morning the mistake is erased. The book is there to tell you basically teach you values and how we learn from our mistakes and we shouldn't try and erase them and stop them from happening because we learn from them and they shape who we are and change parts of our life. It's a fantastic book and while I really really like Scott Pilgrim I like this a lot more and I thought that it had some really good messages in it and some really good values in it. Then we have Black Ice by Becca Fitzpatrick. Becca Fitzpatrick wrote the Hush Hush series, which was a very popular series. Lots of people talk about it. I see it all over booktube. I see them in the shops. I see so many people talking about them. But she also wrote this, which was a standalone. It's about a girl called Brit. She's not very adventurous and not very outdoorsy. Her and her friend go on a hiking trip up in the mountains. She's not very good at it. It becomes a bit thrillery and a bit dark. They bump into some people they probably didn't want to bump into. But it's written fantastically and I really, really enjoyed it. And it was gripping and I didn't know what was going to happen and who we should trust and where we should should go and I thought that she did a fantastic job with this book. Finally, would it be a run on the road video if I didn't mention Cassandra Clare? No, no it wouldn't. And Holly Black, those two women are very popular authors. They collaborated and wrote a series called the Magisterium series about a guy called Callum who goes to this school and he tries to fail to get in because his dad doesn't want him to go because he feels there's magic is bad and he wants to protect Callum and he he fails so badly that the the people there know that he obviously deliberately failed so they let him in anyway and he goes to this school for magic to learn all these different things and lots of things happen and there's a big twist and there's an evil man not as many people know about it and not as many people read them and talk about them whereas I think it's two fantastic authors that write fantastic books that have come together to collaborate so it's a bunch of like fantastic writing and a really good story. Those are just some books by very famous authors that I feel as though don't have as much appreciation as they should. I feel as though those are books some people might not know about so I wanted to share them with you because they really are some of my all-time favourites and I want more people to read them because they're so good. Thank you guys for watching, I hope that you liked this video. All of my links are in the description as usual and let me know some of your favourite books that you feel as though deserve more appreciation down in the comments. I hope that you are all doing really well and I will see you next time. Goodbye!